A tiny iPod, well, it seems much less threatening than a rock concert, right? But it can actually be more dangerous. In fact, studies have found that young people have a rate of impaired hearing two and a half times greater than that of their parents and grandparents. Dr. Karush Param, an ear, nose, and throat specialist at ENT at Yukon Health Center, is here to explain. Doctor, how are you? Good morning. I'm well, thank you. I'm doing well as well. So let's take a look at the tips. We're going to talk about, we already talked about the problem. We've solidified that. But now let's look at tips to prevent Certainly. hearing loss. Uh, Yvonne, it's all about noise volume control. Volume is really the main factor here. So there are various strategies to control that volume. One is to simply turn it down. You know, when you're typically in a noisy environment, we turn to turn the volume up. Mm -hmm. When we transition into quiet environment, we should bring that volume back down. If we transition into an environment and there are other people speaking, if we can't hear them talking over our iPod, that's too loud. And Can it's I just show you, damaging. that's a great rule of thumb, but I find that even if, if I can't, if I hear someone else, I want to tune them out, so I raise up the volume, and that's not what you should do. Definitely not. I mean, that's one of the factors that causes more impairment of hearing in the face of other noise, whether it's in a car driving around and the iPod is in, the car noise causes problems, so people tend to turn the iPod on, or when you're in an environment where other people are speaking, it causes the greater risk for hearing loss when we keep turning that volume up. When you talk about limiting your time, because that makes sense, of course, to do that, how much are we talking about? How many hours per day, or what should it be? Again, it depends on the volume. You know, when we have a conversation, that's typically about 60 decibels. We can keep on talking. But when we turn the volume to about 100 decibels, about rock concert, and 110 decibels, we can take about an hour of that fairly safely. Mm -hmm. Once the ear starts to ring or hearing becomes muffled, we've been exposed to too much, and we've got to rest the ear. The greater the energy, the less time we can be exposed to the sound. Now, those are signs that people ignore, myself included. I was telling you, here in the broadcast business, we wear something called an IFB in our ears. It's just a little device in our ears. And for the ten, past 10, 12 years, I've had it at full blast. That's so great. I will say I have impaired hearing in my right ear. When people talk to me, sometimes I turn to the left. Right. That's, that's horrible. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a common problem with people in broadcasting. Really? Yourself, ESPN regionally. When we see people, when they wear ear pierce, they have a preferred ear, and that ear tends to be exposed to excessively loud noise, and we keep turning that on mm -hmm. uh, louder and louder as hearing loss progresses. We've got to find a comfortable level that's functional, yet doesn't cause any further impairment. And from experience, I'll say, once you lose the uh, hearing in your ear, it's gone. Unfortunately, that's true. It's permanent. There are, once we get initial exposure to loud noise, if we cut down on exposure, give our ear a rest, we can recover that hearing. But if we keep exposing it to that stimulation that's excessive, the loss becomes permanent. Where else do you find there to be problems other than iPods? I mean, anything where you, you have something in your ear? Well, anything that you have an insert earphones. earphone, volumes tend to be long. But keep in mind, even occupational household exposures, a lawnmower excessively exposing somebody like yourself that already has existing hearing loss mm -hmm. can be a potential source for additional hearing loss. So you're saying in this case, don't wait until you lose it, such as myself. You're saying you want to pro you want to keep this and be proactive. Exactly. Prevention is the key. Yes. There is nothing we can do once it's lost other than put a hearing aid in your ear. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're at that point yet, but I, I think I need to turn it down. I exactly. have it at, at the loudest. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, I know. I That's know you. Not the, you know, I know. <laughs> I'm getting myself in trouble with him already. But yeah, I have it at the loudest at the loudest volume. But anything else you want to let people know as far as when it comes to hear loss? Uh, hearing loss is preventable. Majority of cases of hearing loss is due to no noise exposure. There are other factors like our genes and environmental noise we can't do much about. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to control with iPods and things like that, we can prevent that. And that's the sad part. Hearing loss is going to be a major problem for our society if we don't bring this under control. We might not feel so much at this time, but 10 years, 15 years in the future, it'll come back to haunt us. Y you're right. And as I mentioned at the beginning about the rate of impaired hearing, two and a half times that of their parents and grandparents. So you're saying even at a younger age, you're seeing more and more cases. Absolutely. And it's not just hearing loss, ringing in the ears. That's becoming more and more prevalent. Youth did not used to complain of that very mm -hmm. much. That's a sign that there is significant high frequency hearing loss. And over time, that will progress to go into speech areas where people will have greater appreciation of that loss. You said muffled. That's right. Once it gets into the low frequency area, then the hearing sounds muffled. 
So if someone is experiencing this at home and thinking, well, I'm going to be honest with myself, sometimes this is what I experience, or sure. this, then they definitely need to go see an ENT right Absolutely. away. And the ear needs rest. After that kind of symptom occurs, you have to have at least 48 hours of rest. Give the ear a chance to recover a little bit. Okay, Dr. Parham, thank you so much. Thank you for I having me. I appreciate it.